Hallelujah. I want you to turn with me tonight, if you have your Bibles, to the book of Malachi, chapter number 3. Third chapter of the book of Malachi. I'm trying not to preach as long as I did last night. Last night was just one of them that you really had to take a while to get settled in for the ride. But I hope it helps somebody, and I hope that uh, we can go out and not be ashamed of what we are. There's a reason why we are what we are. He said he reached down to people, pull out at other people that's going to stand for the truth. And I want to be one of those. Amen? Yes. There's an old song that's in the red back hymn that says, I'm glad I'm one of them. And I want to be one of them. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. And third chapter of the book of Malachi, looking at verse number uh, 13. The Lord speaking here to his people Israel, and he says, your, your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we should have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? I want you to look at verse number 14 again. There's a question that they ask. They said, it is vain to serve God. And what does it profit that we have kept his ordinance and we have wa and that we have walked mournfully against our before the Lord of hosts? My Lord. I want you to pay close attention because the words of Israel to the Lord was almost just the biggest slap in the face that you could honestly give God. Because after all that he had done for them, after all of bringing them out of the out of bondage and twice. Because they not only we think of the uh, Egypt, we think of Egypt, but it wasn't just Egypt. He brought them out of Babylon too. That's right. So twice um, they were delivered. Four hundred and fifty years out of Egypt, seventy years out of Babylon. But uh, you know, I mean, all of these years that they were took, taken away in captivity, but both times God brought them out. And he'd done all of these miracles all throughout the Old Testament for them. All throughout the wilderness, they had seen the power of God through the ten plagues. They had seen God provide for them. Israel had had a history of Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. Can somebody amen. say amen? amen? But then one day, before the, new, before the Old Testament is completed, they honestly have the nerve and the gall, Pastor, to say, Every bit of what we have done for you is vain. Ain't that a shame that God's people would tell him that they have it's vain to serve him and that they have walked mournfully before the Lord? That's a shame, man. Yes, it is. But I want to talk tonight about that. I want to use for a subject that question, but I want to throw a question back to him. And I want to use for a subject, is it vain to serve the Lord? We're going to find out, is it vain? Because I guarantee you something, these, ain't, these people are not the only ones that would say that. Come on. There's a lot of folks that says it's vain to serve the Lord. But is it vain? <laughs> or, or, or really, honestly, can we stand, and not just because we're churchy, and not just because we're Christians, or born again, but take, it, take the born again out of it. Could we still say it's not vain? to serve the Lord, or is it vain to serve the Lord? Would you pray with me? Father, yes. we come before you tonight. We thank you for your spirit and your power. Oh, we know that you don't just dwell in big crowds. You also dwell where two or three are gathered yes. together in your name. And God's your anointing is the same. It's the same as it is with 500, the yes. same as it is with 10, God. And we give you glory and praise and honor. Help it, Lord, to sow a seed into somebody's heart. Yes. Help it to revive somebody's soul. In Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen. Can I get some water, please, brother? Because yes, my throat is not going to hold it. I ain't preached for a while. Last night was the first time I preached in a few months. And, but, uh, <clears throat> whoo, y'all just have to bear with me. I, before I get into this question, I want to tell you uh, about something that uh, I heard in uh, um, a guy say one time. It really blessed me a lot. He didn't preach this message, it was, but it was part of his message. And I'll never forget years ago hearing this story. He said he was out behind his house one day and he said, there was, it was, all, it was kind of like it was here. It's a true story. It's kind of like it is here. He lived kind of back in the, away from town and there was some woods behind his house, kind of like they are here. And he said um, one day he goes out and he... And he, he sees the, uh, the, there's people working out there, and, he, and they're looking and they're cutting down trees behind his house. 
Now, years ago, they used to do it the old-fashioned way, with an axe or with a saw, a two-man saw, or even a chainsaw. But nowadays, they've got these huge machines that's got a big blade uh, in the front of it, and they just rip right through, just rip right through trees. You know what I'm talking about. And they can, and they, I mean, the thing just takes them and right through it and throws it in the back. And, and I mean, all this is machinery now. Not like it was in the old days where loggers had to actually go out and, and work. But now the machines do it, which makes it easier, makes it faster. But he said one day he goes out and he sees this big, huge machine. He never had seen one before. Like I said, he was kind of from the old school. And he never had seen nothing like this. And the preacher said he walked out one day and he said, I saw uh, them uh, cutting down these trees. And he said this big old blade was going out and he said it was just, it was just going Right, just around and around and around. And he said it was going through these trees like butter. And he said uh, years ago now, the, the, the back story was years ago, that, there, that behind where the woods were now, there was, that used to be a little town. It used to be an old town that, that, that from way back in the 1800s, early 1900s. And, but it all grown up and now it was a farm. And so it used to be buildings there. In fact, you could find some, the, a lot of times, he said you could go out and take metal detectors and find things from the old, the old, where the old hitching posts and stuff used to be. Well, you know, if you know anything about trees, trees usually don't die at a young age. They usually die at a very old age. Trees can live to be hundreds of years old. Even the big redwoods in California, hundreds and hundreds of years old. Some in Africa, even close to seven, eight hundred years old. But trees have a long lifespan, and so... Most of them trees that were that, that was behind his house was there years ago when the town was there because there were a lot of old trees. And so he said, I walked out and he said, I was just kind of curious. And he said, I walked over to where the men were working and he said, I was stood in amazement as I watched this big blade just saw right through these trees, like these huge trees, big old hickory trees and ash trees like they were butter, making a, a clear path to build sub, a subdivision and houses that was going to be, a lot that was going to be sold to build houses behind his house. So, and so he said, but, but he said they began to just saw down all these trees, but there was one in particular tree that he said was marked. And he said this tree had a, a, a big ribbon around it and said caution. He said, so as the day went on, he said he kind of just kept look out the window, kind of go back out there and he, he'd offer them things and, and all that stuff, try to help out. And he said, all, they, they went all around the tree, except uh, trees, except this one tree. And he said, so after a, cu a couple of days of this, he said he just knew it was going to cut the tree down because it wasn't special. It was just an old ugly dead or an uh, ugly live tree. And he said, but it was, it was old and it had a bunch of branches out. But he said, it had caution, do not touch or whatever, uh, that yellow tape around it. And he said, but every other tree around this tree was cut down. And so he says, uh, what he asked after a couple of days of this, he just got curious and he asked, he said, why are you not cutting that tree down? Is it a mark or is it a survey mark or something? He said, no. The guy said, well, said we were going to cut it down, but said when we inspected this property, he said we began to check all the trees to make sure that everything was okay and everything would do right. And he said we could use the lumber because we didn't want to waste trees. And you know, it's all a mathematical thing anymore. And so he said we wanted to get the measurements and all of this. But he said as we were inspecting this, months ago, he said, this tree has metal inside of it. He said, it don't just have all of some metal, it has a lot of metal. He said, inside that tree, there's even big chains, and there's there's nails, and there's, and there's spikes in, the, in, in that tree embedded. Well, you couldn't see it because of the fact that the, that, that the, that it was so many years ago that the bark had already grew over the chains. But if you were to start peeling the bark back, you would have seen spikes that long you would have seen chains embedded in that tree and then he says well how come he says well what we understand is years ago this was an old town and he said this was a lot of the place where they would come and hitch up their mule or they would hitch up their horses or they would or they would they, he said it was they'd always come and they drive things in this tree they put chains around and after years and years and years it just they, somebody left the chain on the tree and he said if that saw blade goes through it it's going to damage the saw blade because somebody 
Say amen. And so as he said, we don't want our saw blade because it's an expensive blade. We don't want it to jam. We don't want it to get, uh, uh, we don't want it to uh, get uh, fit.